My lovely, lovely imps. We need to have a short talk about Joseph Robinette Biden, a.k.a. Dark Brandon, a.k.a. Sleepy Joe, a.k.a. Uncle Sniffy, okay? Malarkey Joe, okay? Yeah, as some people are beginning to call him Genocide Joe. We got to have a uh, we got to have a talk about him, okay? Now, many of you have uh have probably heard me say that I think that it would take something truly uh uh shocking to 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 shake up Biden's chances against Donald Trump uh next year. Shocking to even <laughs> It's horrifying to even think that uh, that it's it's only a year only a year from today. It's November fourth. It's only one year until it's going to be the twenty twenty four election, in which inevitably it is going to be, barring something like you know uh, the, the 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 toll of the funerary funerary bells. Um, it's going to be Joe Biden versus Donald Trump in just one year. Um, and I've said that in order for Joe Biden to, to have, to like have his chances against Donald Trump damaged, something truly unexpected would have to happen. Unfortunately, that happened. Okay. That event has actually occurred and we find ourselves in a very, very strange position. You see, um, Donald Trump is not doing very well. Um, he is in a lot of trouble. He's not able to focus on actually campaigning. He's been in a ton of legal trouble. The Republican Party uh, has a bunch of uh, random people who are trying to pull attention from Donald Trump for various reasons, although they've mostly failed. Uh, even still, the Republican Party vote is split at the moment, which means that Joe Biden is at least, you know, theoretically in a very, very good position for winning against Donald Trump. I mean, he already beat Donald Trump once and, um, uh, you know, you'd have the incumbent advantage and also the Republican Party is in disarray. However, um, as many of you will know, uh, the Israel-Palestine situation um, has really, really uh, uh, gotten a lot of international attention and specifically in the united states a very particular demographic has been activated on this issue and that is the left-leaning youth vote now youth vote is huge okay and the left-leaning youth boast vote is massive but there's a problem with the youth vote which is that they're unreliable and what i mean by that is that uh, from a pure statistical analysis, young people don't vote all that often. And there's a number of reasons for this that I'll explain right now. Um, one, they're busy with living their life. Young people have lots of stuff going on. They're going to school. They're working jobs. They're going to parties. They're doing all kinds of wild stuff, okay? Young people have a lot going on in their lives. And politics can be a little boring sometimes, let's be honest. So sometimes they just don't show up to vote. That's uh, that's the first thing that's up with them. The second thing, and this one's pretty important, is that they don't have a lot of autonomy. That's right. Young people, as it turns out, are actually very, very easy to disenfranchise, even if they are into politics. And this is one that people don't talk about very often because they like to fixate on the first one, which is the partying and the young people being young people thing, you know? But the second one is really important. Think of it like this. I'm going to give you an example, okay? College campus, right? Many of you probably went to college. Most college kids who go to a college don't have a car, which means if their school doesn't have a polling place on it or near it, which some schools don't, depends a lot on your college, or if there's a bunch of other stuff going on and you can't make it to your nearby polling place, you don't have a lot of options to actually be able to get 
and go do the vote. It becomes increasingly complex, whether it's you got to take buses or you got to find a ride or you got to pay for a ride. If you're not one of the few college kids who owns a car and gets to have it on campus, transportation becomes a major issue issue for you, especially if you've also got a lot of other things on your mind, like I said in the first example. So one of the reasons why um, the youth vote is particularly unreliable is because it's extremely easy to, to basically make it to reduce the numbers of the uh, youth vote by not having polling places on college campuses where lots of young people uh, are likely to vote. Um, and yes, as Fortnite and chat brings up, some red states have literally banned polling places being set up at colleges. I wonder why they would do that. I wonder why. Is it perhaps because young voters tend to lean left and if they had a polling place on their college campus, they'd be able to very easily vote and have their voice heard and therefore it is strategically valuable for the right wing to vote to suppress, indirectly suppress? I would say actually it is fairly direct, but indirectly because they're not actually voting to say you can't vote. They're just taking away the ease with which you can get there and saying, well, now you got to go take a bus or get a taxi or do an Uber or ride with a friend, which makes things a lot more difficult. Interesting, right? So those are the two big reasons why the youth vote is, uh, is unreliable, okay? But they're powerful. There are a ton of youth voters. And like I said, they mostly vote left-leaning. They vote Democrat predominantly, which means that it's a really, really, really big deal for the Democrats to activate the youth vote. It is super important. Like as in they need to do everything they can to try and make sure that the youth vote is excited to go to the polls and that they'll actually show up because there's a really big chance that they won't. And if they don't, you're just losing votes that would otherwise give you a massive advantage over the Republican candidate. All of this is to explain why Joe Biden has gotten himself in some electoral hot water and it's bad news, okay? Youth vote is big. They tend to vote left. They are easily discouraged or blocked from voting, which means encouraging them is very important. And they care a lot about Palestine, like a lot about Palestine. Joe Biden, since um, October 7th, there was a, uh, a, a terrorist attack um, uh, 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 made against the state of Israel. Um, and during that attack, a number of uh, civilians were indiscriminately killed. Um, it was a very horrific incident. Um, and after following that incident, the hyper-conservative government of Israel has essentially unleashed total war on the population of uh, Gaza, um, which for those who don't know, I have a whole video on this. You can go check if you want to learn everything else. If you're not up to date on this issue, recommend just searching my channel for Israel and Palestine. Um, but Gaza is a militarily occupied um, region uh, that formerly uh, was considered Palestine. And um, it has been described uh, for a very long time, the conditions of life there have been described as an open air prison. The uh, situation is very bad and the state of Israel has not treated the people of Palestine well by any measure. In fact, they are literally disenfranchised. They have an apartheid state. Palestinians cannot vote um, on their own future. They don't have the right. Their future is decided by Israel. So while the attack, uh, the attack against Israel on the 7th was heinous and a lot of innocent people died, the hyper-conservative state of Israel has used this as an excuse to go um, bloodthirsty on a lot of innocent people. And Joe Biden has supported this unequivocally. Joe Biden has been incredibly, incredibly loud in his support of Israel. He has repeatedly stated 
that um, that they back Israel no matter what, that Israel has an unquestionable right to defend itself, that they will continue to support Israel. Uh, they are still, um, they are supporting sending arms and munitions to Israel. They are supporting sending money to Israel. They are basically whole hog supporting Israel going on a, a genuinely sickeningly violent uh, act of retribution against the entire population of Palestine. Now you should know, of course, that the attack was not uh, done by Palestine. Palestine and Palestinians didn't do this attack. A group called Hamas did the attack. A group which represents an incredibly small percentage of the Palestinian population who are now being punished en masse. Most recently, Israel uh, has, has, become, has gotten extreme negative international attention because they blew up the biggest refugee camp in Palestine. They blew it up. They flattened it. A refugee camp with women, children, living in tents, and it was blown up, flattened to the ground. They don't even know the full uh, death count of how many people perished in that incident. There is no uh, ifs, ands, or buts about the indiscriminate attack that is being waged by Israel against Palestine. And Joe Biden has stood behind it. So I want you to think of all these things together. Let's re-add it back up. Young people care about Palestine a lot. Joe Biden is not supporting Palestine and is in fact going completely the opposite and completely supporting Israel in their attack against the people of Palestine. Joe Biden needs the youth vote. The youth vote is very easy to not, uh, to deactivate and the youth vote cares about Palestine. You see where this is going. Now, why Biden is making the decisions that he's making is somewhat confusing. We all know that America tends to support Israel on most issues. And that is... Um, largely because Israel is a valuable military foothold in the Middle East. It is America's most valuable military foothold in the Middle East. It's why the U.S. military gives so much money, arms, training, support to Israel, because it is basically uh, the United States sees Israel as like a, um, a proxy state in some ways. Uh, they are like such an ally that we can reliably know that they will always side with us. However, at the end of the day, the United States is the decider in this situation. The United States gets is the one uh, uh, making the calls and sending the money. Israel relies on the U.S., not the other way around. The Israel is something valuable to the U.S. So it makes sense generally why the United States would tend to side with Israel on most issues from a purely geopolitical, you know, cold, hard military calculation angle. But why so hard and so vocally in this particular incident? And there isn't really a good answer. Nobody really knows what Joe Biden and his um, administration are thinking right now in going so hard because obviously they could, if they wanted to, continue to do what they've always done, which is basically... Um, pay, you know, pay lip service to Israel's, uh, uh, you know, to Israel's statements and continue to su supply them monetarily. There's like basically no doubt that that was going to continue no matter what, because of what I said before, the, the cold, hard geopolitical calculation that the U.S. government will do. But Joe Biden hasn't just done that. Joe Biden has gone on public record over and over and over again to continually voice his extreme support for Israel. And again, keep in mind that Israel is currently controlled by a hyper-conservative faction that opposed Joe Biden. Benjamin Netanyahu, the current prime minister of Israel's government, opposed Joe Biden and was a big Trump guy. So Joe Biden is for some reason extremely married to this vocal hyper vocal support of israel and it's cost him dearly 
In fact, among the youth vote, I have seen estimates as high as 11% loss in support for Joe Biden. That is devastating. That is absolutely devastating. Especially when we're talking about the youth vote. Because like I said, they're if if they're not feeling if the youth vote isn't feeling passionate about a candidate, they won't show up to the polls, which means there will be l way less overall democratic votes, which is horrifying to think about, especially given the stakes. So that was a bit of a long setup for the situation and explanation of what's going on, but it is not good, okay? Joe Biden has made a severe miscalculation. Now, I don't know if it's because his team isn't paying attention to polling or if there is some other motivating factor, like perhaps Joe Biden's personal feelings on the matter are such that he uh, is like, we're going to stand by Israel to the very end. We're going to take Israel to the hilt. Um, no matter how bad it gets, but, um, like it is sort of a bipartisanly bad look right now to stand behind Israel unequivocally when they just blew up the largest refugee camp in Gaza and everybody knows about it. Every single person in the world saw this, even conservatives, okay, who t traditionally back Israel, no matter what, even conservatives fucking Pierce Morgan was denouncing Israel because of the refugee camp bombing. Pierce Morgan, who we just watched go on like a, a, a interrogate uh, a, a Palestinian uh, a, a Palestinian supporting uh, comedian, Egyptian comedian uh, Bassem Youssef. He just interrogated him over and over again. Do you deny? Do you do you uh, do you? Um, uh, do you denounce Hamas? Do you denounce Hamas when he was trying to talk about the fact that his family, like, that that his family was in danger, who are not members of Hamas, who are being tar who are being put in danger, and 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 Piers Morgan is like, do you not den denounce Hamas? Do you denounce Hamas? Yeah, Wolf Blitzer was even giving the IDF put pushback. It is absurd. Okay. It is, it is such a very, very bad decision. Joe Biden has miscalculated so severely on this, on this issue that I think it's actually endangering his electoral prospects. And given that this issue isn't going to go away and we only have a year before the election, this is very bad. As it turns out, genocide, mass death is a really important issue to young voters. And... Joe Biden's um, sort of like just completely blind support for Israel um, has not done him any favors. And his team just doesn't seem interested in acknowledging the truth. They don't seem willing to acknowledge the fact that people aren't happy with his position. Now, on a general democratic level, that's an issue. You know, the president is supposedly, and we all know this is bullshit, but the president is supposedly supposed to, re you know, be the ultimate representative of the voice of the people. You know, he's supposed to listen and and be the voice of the people. But on a, uh, even on a lesser level, he is, he is responsible as a, as a democratic president, he is responsible for making decisions that will ensure that the Republicans don't take power. And this is especially important when we're talking about Donald fucking Trump being the other person that he's, that, that, that he's running against. Donald Trump, whose current plan is to get into office as soon as possible so that he can pardon himself of all of the crimes that he is being, um, investigated for donald trump who has since he left office spent has has been involved in a myriad of civil and criminal court cases because of his behaviors during and after his presidency and it's not some kind of a even if you wanted to say there are there are people out there who are like it's a political witch hunt against donald trump we're no no, even if you were to turn off all of the um, all of the explicitly political ones, he has a mountain of civil lawsuits, 
civil lawsuits. Right now, he's in a uh, he's in a, a heap of trouble because it turns out that he and his and his uh, cohorts were um, were lying allegedly. Actually, I think has he been convicted on that yet? I think he was. I'm pretty sure he was. Uh, on a lying about the property value of multiple of his properties, defrauding his own investors. This isn't even arguably a political witch hunt. The Joe Biden campaign has nothing to do with uh, whether or not his investors find out they've been defrauded. So this is what we're dealing with right now. A Joe Biden White House that is, ironically, completely asleep at the wheel. They are unable to keep up with the current political situation. They don't know what the opinion is on the ground. And let me tell you, people are very, very motivated by this Palestine issue, okay? The protests across the U.S. have been massive. And you got to think, remember how I talked about how it's kind of hard to motivate the youth vote unless they feel strongly about something? Well... They feel strongly enough about Palestine that they're showing up in every major city in the United States for free Palestine protests. There has been a huge wave of massive free Palestine protests all over the U.S., largely driven by youth uh, uh, voters. So I just want you to think about that. If the if if youth voters are difficult to motivate towards voting, but they're motivated enough to get out into the streets to protest, that just shows how important this issue is to those people. And the Biden White House doesn't seem to care. They don't seem to even be paying attention to the fact that they are alienating a highly activated base of supporters, of potential supporters. Nutt says, if Biden came out in strong support for Palestine, the Dems and GOP would yeet his ass out of office like Nixon. No, that's not true at all. That's not true at all. But also, he doesn't have to come out in strong support for Palestine. He can just not come out in strong support for Israel. His, uh, his, his support for Israel has been way, way over the top. Like, like shockingly over the top. He's been doing nothing but issuing statements in support of Israel. It's just been ju -ju 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 -ju. but I don't agree that even if he had issue, uh, shown support um, for Palestine um, that uh, that he would have gotten yeeted out of office at all. Because actually, as it turns out, this issue has become more complicated than, than common knowledge. It was formally believed that basically um, criticizing Israel was political suicide uh, specifically among right-wingers. Um, but that's not true anymore. It's just not true anymore. Um, criticizing the state of Israel is no longer like a position of political suicide. It just isn't. Um, and also, this is exacerbated by the fact that, um, by the fact that, uh, um, people recognize now the, the, the general political populace of activated voters recognize how much power America has over Israel. Um, and uh, because, and part of this is a side, is a byproduct, in my opinion, part of this is a byproduct of the fact that um, politicians have been so vocal for so long in their support of Israel. As a result, the average person knows that America gives a lot of money to Israel. The average person knows that, that America gives military aid to Israel to a great degree. And so the, the flip side of this is that now we know that Joe Biden could actually impact this, that Joe Biden could say something and potentially save lives in Palestine, innocent lives. Oh, the current numbers as of yesterday is that 9,448 Palestinians have died. Um, about a third of those, a little over a third of those are children. That is, that is shocking, okay? By no measure is this like some kind of a war against terrorists or a war against extremists. This is a war that is being waged predominantly 
on innocent people with over a third of nearly 10,000 people. Actually, it's closer to like 50%. Let me see. Hold on. Three thousand seven hundred and sixty. Yeah, closer to like almost fifty percent. That's like almost four thousand out of nine thousand. So it's like, yeah, like closer to fifty percent of the of the people killed in Palestine have been children. And and uh, and now everybody knows that Biden could 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 affect that. As it turns out, um. Joe Biden has made a big mistake here. Now, there's still time for Joe Biden to change direction. A lot of damage has already been done, and some people are simply done with, with Joe Biden. This has severely damaged his uh, polling numbers, especially among the youth vote, but it's not done yet. Um, he could turn it around, and he should. Um, and honestly, uh, all those of you in my audience who are particularly politically connected or motivated, you should do what you can to continue to build pressure on Biden to change this for, for two reasons. One, because it's obviously the right thing to do. Biden does have the power. He does have the power to save lives in Palestine. He can apply pressure to Israel that will slow their deranged killing of innocents in Palestine. Okay? Seriously. That's it. That's the big one. And secondly, because if he continues with this way, there's a very good chance that hit that that his uh, ability to beat Donald Trump comes into question, and that would be a disaster for everyone, not just for Palestinians. That would be a disaster for everyone. We already know how Donald Trump's um, international policy was disastrous, um, but also his internal policy has been terrible. So there's a two major reasons to try and pressure Biden to change his position on this turn around but he needs to do this soon yes he needs to do it as soon as possible before it's too late um because if he doesn't um then he's putting his own chances at jeopardy in addition to just standing by and supporting um an increasingly genocidal war being waged by israel um yeah it is uh it's a disastrous situation and I felt the need to talk about Joe Biden uh, and his severe miscalculation. Um, it's honestly, it, it's funny because I was just a few weeks ago talking about how it would take something uh, genuinely out of left field to shake things up and to put Biden's position in danger. And it happened. That's just politics, I guess. Ex Oblivion says, have you seen the BS Fetterman is talking? It's so bad. Yeah, it's been pathetic. Um, Fetterman has been uh, totally pathetic. Um, even going to the degree of, of having a guy who was questioning him uh, thrown out of a bar in a video, it's just Fetterman just, just dipping his head in the toilet right now. It is a pathetic play by him. I don't know what the, I don't know what he was thinking. Um, that video is going to do a lot of damage to him, regardless, um, regardless of what you think of the guy who was asking the question, the guy was, he was kind of annoying. And as I understand it, he's got some bad, um, he's got some bad, pol uh, political opinions, but in that video, he was just asking as a voter, uh, and to have a video of him getting thrown out of a bar after on the video, Fetterman does like a nod to his security guard. And then the security guard just like yanks the guy out of the building it's a really, really bad look. It's like, that's the type of thing that a Republican candidate would get caught doing, not uh, a, 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 a liberal Democrat who leans left. Keep in mind that Fetterman's base is a bunch of, you know, activated left-leaning liberals um, and, left, and, and genuine lefties. He was carried into office by those people, and now they're going to see him utilizing security to throw out a guy who is being critical of his heinous positions on Israel. Oh yeah, the onion is even getting onto Fetterman. That's a really bad sign. You know you've really messed up if the onion starts roasting you on this particular issue.
Mr. Krabs123 uh, says, Demon Mama, we have two people who are pro-genocide in the race, which are Biden and Trump, which sucks, but I have to vote Biden. It doesn't mean I will like it, but I, but, but Trump will push genocide farther. Like he said, he won't stop the genocide on Gaza, but amplify it. Um, yeah, but we're not talking about, um, uh, we're not talking about the highly, highly informed voter uh who who you know sort of recognizes voting as a cold calculus between the lesser of two evils um i think everybody here is gonna mostly vote blue um i think pretty much everyone here acknowledges that biden would be better than trump um i think most ev most most people who are like uh gonna be making that calculation who are very politically motivated are going to recognize that, you know, obviously there's the far right wingers, but those guys, they're like Trump or die. Um, you can't reach those people in that, you know, they're never going to vote for Biden. Um, but it doesn't really matter because what we're talking about is we're talking about a, uh, group of people who aren't, uh, you know, you know, they're not super pol pol politics brain. They don't spend all their time watching political streamers. They don't hang out in the chats of political streamers they have issues that they care about and other than that they live their lives and those people are not as committed to you know vote blue no matter who they'll just not really care that much if they feel like the candidate is not motivating them there's a lot of people like that statistically like most americans don't vote So, yeah, the problem is that, like, you can only, um, you can only blame, like, you can only blame, uh, you know, the, like, I don't know, you can't blame Bernie Busters, Bernie or Busters for this. You can't blame, uh, ticket splitters for this. You can't blame, uh, anybody for this. This is Biden's fault. He's discouraging his own voters and he's, and He's doing it in a way that everybody knows will happen. Everybody knows the youth vote is notoriously fickle. That's how it is. It's just a fact of reality and he's not respecting it. It's a bad play. He's not doing a good job. He's not doing his job. And the Democratic Party is failing to respond to the situation. So like, while I think, while obviously I think that voting for Biden is obviously better than Trump. There's no doubt about that. And in fact, voting for Biden is better than not voting because otherwise you will get Trump and Trump is horrible. Um, that's the entire argument that I'm having here. But I need to point the finger at who deserves the ire. And the person who deserves the ire here is Joe Biden. That's who deserves it. He's the one who's messed up. He's the one who is messing up. He's the one who is vocally supporting a genocidal war that has killed nearly 4,000 children. So the sad thing is that all of us here who are like, who are willing to vote for Biden because we don't want Trump, we're going to be, we're going to be one of the many people who pay the price. Doesn't it suck? This is one of those moments where uh, you start to understand why so many people are checked out of politics because it's the worst feeling in the world when you're like a principled person and you go, yeah, I recognize that I don't agree with Biden on a lot on everything, but that Biden is obviously a better decision than Trump. So I'm going to make sure that I do what I can to, you know, to get Biden into office over Trump for the greater good, because I'm focusing on a bigger issue. Um, and then you just realize that the guy is so bad and so incompetent, so shitty at his job and so careless that he's bungling it no matter what, that no matter what we do at this moment, no matter what people like us do at this moment, uh, he's doing more damage to himself than any of us could ever ameliorate. Ex Oblivion says, yeah, I knew, I knew that, I knew that word was going to activate you. I knew it was going to activate you. I, I find I can find the, 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 the Vosh heads in the audience because of that. <laughs> you got, you got, you got grab nuts. There you go. 
But it's, hey, I, I'm, I'm using it right. I also think that meme is very funny. Killjoy says, it's super important that people know that we need to vote in the primaries because APAC has sworn to unseat Dems who support Palestine and have taken a fuck ton of conservative money to do so. Yeah, I have no doubt about that. Um, voting in your primaries is important. Unfortunately, this is the state of politics in the United States. It's a terrible position to find yourself in, and it uh, being politically involved in the United States is a constant uh, um, path of pain. Uh, it is almost never uh, uh, full of, of victories. It is just a difficult struggle, and you have to find a way to be strong through it because it's important. Paying attention to politics is important, even if it's a miserable uh, march and victories are few and far between but they do happen they do happen and as a result you got to you got to pay attention otherwise things just get worse there's there's no option to be uninvested uh really you can bury your head in the sand but that's all you're doing Krito says, I'm worried that this is going to have downstream effects of alienating people from the ge Dems generally, which will have bad results for local elections where things matter more. Oh, it will. Yes, undeniably. If the Democrats basically fall in line behind Biden, which they seem to be doing at the moment, this is very, very bad for the Democrats because it's going to continue to deactivate people who would otherwise be passionate about politics. It's something that needs to be addressed and it's a serious problem with the democrats liberals struggle with this because they are they're so blue no matter who brained um that they forget that like blue no matter who is a strategy for defeating republicans and that's it other than that you have to still do a lot of work to improve the state of the democratic party and to move beyond the limitations of the democratic party you can't just throw up blue no matter who um, you know, uh, you know, ad nauseum. Young Trey 100 says, what can the public do or what needs to be done generally to get them to move towards a better position, which is more politically viable and more moral? Uh, continual pr up, up, upward pressure. Um, protests are valuable because they show how activated people are in a very stark and visible way. Sending letters to your local politicians who can then apply uh, p pressure upwards is really important. Making your voice heard to your politicians on social media, not just tweeting about it randomly, but actually making sure that your local politicians are hearing what you have to say and have good arguments. Um, to take with them um, up, uh, you know, up the ladder is really, really important. Um, all of those things are incredibly important. Um, other than that, though, the thing about this right now, it just seems like the Biden administration is not paying attention, which is, again, really sucks. Um, when the person on top is not listening at all, and uh, there is a depressing effect on, on the actions that are available. It just means you have to continue to build up the pressure and hope that they listen. But he doesn't seem to be showing that, which just means we might be out of luck. Uh, Sleepy Joe sleeping again. Keep the pressure up, though. Joe Biden um, really messed up. He's made a, a serious miscalculation by backing Israel as vocally as he has, especially in the face of changing news. It would be one thing if he supported Israel. We expect a lot of American politicians to do that. Um, but he has been extremely vocal about it, even as horrific news has come out of Israel's actions in, in Gaza. Horrific, um, horrific news. This is a big mistake, and Joe Biden needs to fix it. Otherwise, we could be in a lot of trouble. Actually seriously damaging his polling numbers among the youth vote. So here's to hoping that everyone out there will pressure their local politicians to, to pressure Biden to change his position um, uh, for the good of a lot of people. A lot of lives could be saved if Joe Biden can change course on this particular issue. Anyway, thanks for listening. Make sure you're subscribed, Demon Mama, down below. And let me know your thoughts in the comments, okay?